Hello info person, this is Anton and it's time to have our update in regards to FRBs or mysterious fast radio bursts. The still unexplained mysterious radio signals coming from pretty much everywhere that though only discovered in 2007 have now been found in much higher numbers just because we finally know what to look for. And these signals are exactly what they sound like. They're extremely energetic flashes of radio waves that seem to only last for a millisecond or two and in some cases even shorter. But in that tiny fraction of a second, a typical FRB can produce more energy than the entire sun emits in one year. But in some of the recent studies, as we're going to be discussing today, researchers found something that was even more powerful and something that was even more extreme. Which is what we're going to be focusing on today, discussing some of the more bizarre discoveries in mid to late 2025 and talking about some new record holders. And that's because in the last few months, driven by powerful new telescopes, we essentially entered a new era of fast radio burst science. And even though for many years these were just signals coming from somewhere, but scientists were not entirely certain from where, based on some of the new studies and new observations, at least some of these FRBs have now been pinpointed to exact galaxies and even parts of galaxies where they seem to have come from. Essentially hinting on what possibly produced them and how most of them seem to be created. And so let's talk about some of these studies that as always you can find in the description. But in this case let's actually start with something more practical or I guess why FRBs even matter today and how they're helping astronomers from other disciplines. And that's because these millisecond pulsations can also be used for additional studies especially when it comes to mapping things. Because of their very specific emissions and because there are so many of them coming from so many different places, it actually becomes possible to use them to map the invisible parts of cosmos and to see certain structures that would be otherwise invisible. And for many decades this was a bit of a problem because some stuff, especially some of the more diffuse gas, is almost impossible to see. As a matter of fact, when comparing theoretical predictions about the mass of the universe and comparing this to the actual observations, for many decades there was actually something missing. And not just dark matter, actual matter was missing too. For many years this was referred to as the missing baryon problem. Or just to rephrase this, even though we see a lot of gas and a lot of dust and a lot of galaxies and stars around us, technically there should actually be at least twice as much. And so half of the mass was missing and nobody knew where it was. And that's of course on top of the other missing stuff like dark matter. But turns out that over the years there was a way for us to find this mass and to see it directly. So it wasn't really missing, it was just very difficult to see. And mostly because it was very spread out and located between galaxies. And some of the first hints we've actually discussed in some of the previous videos in the description revealed that it was, as I assumed before, hiding between galaxies. And that's where FRBs come in and help us confirm this once again. Because here they act like cosmic flashlights. As the radio signal travels across billions of light years of space, and as it passes through certain parts of gas, this will usually change certain wavelengths to stretch and to disperse just a little bit. And so here by precisely measuring how much the light slows down and how much it changes over time, it then becomes possible to estimate the amount of gas it passed through. And so in this recent study, Liam Connor and a team you see here, used 69 localized FRBs to confirm that there was a lot of matter they passed through and a matter that was otherwise invisible. Essentially confirming that as those FRBs traveled toward us, they passed through huge amounts of dust and confirming that 76% of the universe's normal matter or baryonic matter seems to be floating in the intergalactic medium and is outside of galaxies, not inside of them. With this discovery officially once again confirming that the missing matter is between galaxies as it was always assumed. And that was a really important confirmation for cosmology. And really only possible because of these observations of FRBs and what we've learned about them in the last few years. But as I mentioned we also have some really extreme FRBs detected in the last few months and some of them are creating new mysteries. Because in the last year alone astronomers broken records in both distance, proximity and even brightness when it comes to these bizarre radio signals. And here I guess let's start with the most distant FRB detected ever. Reported in this study by Manisha Caleb and this whole team here. This is the FRB known as 2024-0304B. And it looks like it came from somewhere right here. 
This is when the universe was only about 3 billion years old, during the time known as the Cosmic Noon. And also during the time when the star formation most likely peaked, with most galaxies generating most amount of stars. And here the distance is nearly 18 billion light years away from us, making this quite a significant discovery. Mostly because it essentially doubles the previous record, and also suggests that FRBs existed back then as well. And naturally, because it travels through so much space, by studying the signals in more detail, it will probably become possible to determine what it also passed through. So what kind of gas, how much gas, and so on. But here additionally, by using the James Webb Space Telescope, researchers also analyzed the host galaxy, Discovering that it seems to be very low in mass, seems to be relatively young, but is also forming stars very rapidly, with this environment strongly supporting the leading theory for the formation of FRBs, basically magnetars. We do expect these types of galaxies to contain a lot of magnetars, and so at least some of them could potentially produce FRBs. And if you'd like to learn more about why we think it's magnetars, check out one of the previous videos in the description. And in this case, it was a discovery of an FRB coming from our own galaxy, where we know there is a magnetar as well. And so this was definitely quite an intriguing discovery, at least in terms of distances. But then, around the same time, there was actually surprisingly another record holder from a completely different galaxy and, of course, different period of time. In March of 2025, the Canadian experiment known as CHIME detected a burst so powerful that researchers decided to give it a kind of a playful nickname, referring to this as an RB float, short for Radio Brightest Flash of All Time. And you can learn more about this in this study that involved quite a lot of different sciences. And so here, FRB 2025-0316A was so bright that at first researchers thought this was just radio interference from maybe some kind of an airplane or cell phone nearby. So basically this is how powerful it seemed to be. But eventually it was determined to be real, it was confirmed to be definitely an FRB, and was even traced back to the galaxy known as NGC 4141, 130 million light years away from us. It's the galaxy that hasn't been studied a lot, but it kind of looks like this. And so here, by using new techniques, and specifically by using a synchronized network of telescopes across North America, the team was able to achieve unprecedented level of precision, pinpointing the entire source to the region of about 40 light years. And given the distance here, this accuracy is absolutely ridiculous. Here it's basically like observing a tiny coin at a distance of 1000 kilometers. But crucially, unlike some other FRBs, this one was non-repeating. And that's extremely interesting because trying to pinpoint a location for a non-repeating FRB is usually super difficult. Mostly because by definition, they only happen once and only last for a fraction of a second. And here the location seems to suggest it came from the spiral arms. But surprisingly, not in the nearest star forming region, suggesting that maybe either this was not from a magnetar, maybe from a different source, or that the magnetar was kicked out, possibly because of the interaction with other stars, or possibly because of supernova. And that's something that's not impossible and has been observed before. Although I guess let's also briefly discuss why scientists think that this is a magnetar, and why right now this is the best explanation we have. And technically this is not just theoretical anymore, because we do seem to have actual evidence based on some of the bursts observed. And specifically at least one of the bursts, located 200 million light years away from us, was studied something known as scintillation, or basically how much the light is sparkling as it moves away from the source toward us. You can actually think of it as twinkling of a star, but in this case in radio waves. And this is something we've discussed in one of the previous videos, but in essence, based on scintillation or the degree of twinkling, the size of the object in this case was constrained to be at most 10,000 kilometers. So it had to be a really small object, but with a lot of power and able to emit a lot of energy all at once. And at this particular size, well, technically it could be something like a white dwarf, but it just would not have enough energy. So it's most likely a neutron star. But because these emissions also signify very high magnetic fields, here the explanation is that these FRBs seem to emerge from neutron stars' magnetosphere, very likely because of some kind of powerful events happening on the surface of the magnetar. Now exactly what happens is still uncertain, but quite a lot of propositions have been suggested, including maybe collisions with objects such as tiny asteroids and tiny planets. And some of these very similar conclusions have also been reached last year, when researchers from Australia using the Australian radio telescopes, such as for example the Murchison Wide Field Array, 
discovered the presence of a lot of polarization, and actually quite diverse polarization, that must have come from very, very powerful magnetic fields that we believe can only exist around magnetars and nothing else really. And so here many details confirm that the energy coming from these objects seems to originate from extreme magnetic fields close to very compact objects less than 10,000 kilometers in size. So basically a definition for a magnetar. And that's something that's been confirmed in many studies and seems to be the best explanation we have as of 2025. And then last but not least, we also have this bizarre discovery of a hyperactive FRB, or basically a repeating fast radio burst that in this case is just a little bit overactive. This is referred to as FRB 2024-0619D, and it was originally discovered by the South African Meerkat. And here the first three bursts were detected within just the first two minutes. But the emissions and the signals kept repeating once again, and within just the first week, scientists discovered nearly 250. This is basically the most signals detected from a single source in such a short time. Although obviously all of the signals were just a little bit different. But here the origin and the explanation is still not clear. Technically this is very similar to other FRBs, but because currently there is no optical counterpart or basically nothing else is visible in any other frequencies except for radio light, right now we don't really know what's happening and why this object is so active. We just know that it seems to have a lot of repetition, and repetition that seems to be clustered in time, or basically these signals seem to happen in chunks, sometimes even entering something scientists refer to as a burst storm. And this is when the source suddenly switches from being inactive or quiet to suddenly becoming hyperactive. And so here in June of 2024, it was able to produce 250 bursts, but that was just after 4 hours of observations. It's quite likely there were way more that were just missed. But once again, because a lot of this was highly polarized and coming from a very small source, right now powerful magnetospheres and very likely magnetar magnetospheres seem to point at the best explanation. So for example, maybe there was just something orbiting around this magnetar or something that's slowly falling into it, dropping one piece at a time, such as for example some kind of a planet that's falling apart and is slowly being absorbed by the magnetar, or maybe this is something in regards to its environment and where it's currently located, with these emissions being the result of some kind of a high density cloud that the star is flying through. So I guess in short, at the moment the signal itself is very mysterious. But that's why I loved making these videos about FRBs because pretty much every year and now every few months we seem to find new mysteries and new record holders with some of these objects still not really making a lot of sense. And as I mentioned, the best explanation is still a magnetar. In reality, we don't really know what's happening, and even the magnetar model cannot explain everything we're observing. Which means that we'll come back and discuss this again very soon, because I'm sure there are going to be more fascinating discoveries very soon, and possibly some really exciting explanations. And so the future of this field is definitely quite bright. So many more discoveries to be made. As a matter of fact, future projects like the planned DSA 2000 telescope is most likely going to be finding hundreds of these objects every single day. And so the field of radio astronomy is going to have so much to discuss. And until those future discussions and future discoveries, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access and a few secret videos. Alternatively, you can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.